I had a friend tell me a while back that I should do a story about this. And I thought since Halloween is right around the corner, now would be a good time to talk about this story. Since he uh, encouraged me to make this video and tell this story, I just want to dedicate this video to my friend Lance. And the painting, the one of the pictures that you'll see in the background of the video is one of his own paintings. He's very talented, and I just wanted to kind of showcase some of his artwork on this video because it was he was the one that told me I should do this story. I hope you enjoy. If you live in or near eastern Kentucky, you've probably heard of this. And if you haven't, then I hope you will enjoy this story. This is the legend of Octavia Hatcher. There is said to be a spirit that looms over Pikeville, Kentucky. She has become such a part of the folklore of the city and the surrounding county. You can hear a dozen different versions of how she died, how she lived, and how she makes her presence known in the local graveyard. Unfortunately, few of these stories are actually true. The truth may be more frightening. But there are those who maintain that the young woman named Octavia Hatcher still haunts the place. Since her death in 1891, she has never rested in peace. In the 19th century, the most important family in Pike County were the Hatchers. James Hatcher, or Uncle Jim as he was known later in life, was a wealthy landowner and prominent business figure in Pikeville, Kentucky. He was one of nine children born in September of 1859 to A.J. and Murray C. Hatcher. He was born at the mouth of Beaver Creek in Floyd County. He moved to Pikeville early in life and attended school there. Hatcher entered into business in Pikeville at the age of 18 and opened a warehouse for goods that were to be brought in by river. At one time, he handled nearly all of the merchandise that was shipped via steamer to the city. He became associated with other businesses in the town and bought a steamer called Mountain Girl, which was considered the finest boat on the river but it was also a financial failure. Hatcher never let this deter him, and he went into contracting business. This led to the courthouse being erected in the city of Pikeville in 1886. He became known as a pioneer in southeastern Kentucky in the timber business. Long before the coming of the railroads and before coal was discovered in the area, he used hundreds of rafts to float down the Big Sandy River to Ohio and to markets in Cincinnati, Louisville, and Evansville, Indiana. Much of the profit that he invested in land and soon became one of the largest landowners in the valley. He later opened the James Hatcher Coal Company and accumulated great wealth in the industry. He became one of the most prominent figures in the Democratic political circle, and he served as the clerk of Pike County. In, um, in 1932, he was elected railroad commissioner. In 1931, he opened the Hotel Hatcher on Main Street in Pikeville, and this became one of the biggest show places on the Big Sandy River region. The spacious lobby of the place included a museum. The lobby boasted a huge fireplace and walls that were covered with historical photos, maps, and illustrations of both Pike and Floyd County. James Hatcher passed away in his home next door to the Hatcher Hotel in 1939. He'd been ill for several weeks, having just celebrated his 80th birthday. His funeral was held at the hotel and scores of friends and relatives were in attendance as well as Kentucky Governor A.B. Chandler and a number of other state officials. Hatcher was buried at the Pikeville Cemetery in the family plot in a casket 
that he had had especially constructed. There is no indication to what specifications the coffins had been designed, but one has to wonder that it had a safety release that would allow the person inside to escape in the event of a premature burial. As the reader will soon learn, he had every reason to be plagued by this fear. This brings us back to the legend of Octavia Hatcher. In 1889, at the age of 30, James Hatcher married a young woman named Octavia Smith. Their life together would be tragically brief, and their union would produce only one child, Jacob, who was born shortly before his mother died. The baby died soon after he was born, and this led to the depression and illness of Octavia. It is the death of Octavia Hatcher that has created this legend of Pikeville, Kentucky. The Hatcher baby, Jacob, was born January of 1891 and only lived a few days before he died. A short time later, Octavia took to her bed, suffering from depression. She became quite ill. The illness took a turn for the worse in April of that year when she slipped into a coma. The doctors were unable to determine a cause for it, and she died on May the 2nd. The funeral services were held almost immediately due to the hot weather. It was unseasonably hot that spring, and she was not embalmed. No time was wasted in placing her in her grave at the Hatcher family plot. James had just suffered a terrible double tragedy, but his grief was not over. Several days after her death, other people in the community began to display the same coma-like symptoms as Octavia. When news began to spread, Hatcher and members of the family began to worry that this may have been what happened to Octavia. Their fear turned to panic as they realized that she may have been buried alive. She was exhumed and her casket was opened. They found the poor woman in a horrific state. Apparently the coffin had not been airtight and she had managed to survive a few days being trapped in the ground. The lining of the coffin lid had been torn to shreds as well as her bloody fingernails as she had tried to scratch her way out of the coffin. Her face was contorted into an expression of terror as she realized she was going to die in this coffin. She awoke from her sleep to find herself trapped in this coffin, unable to escape. She was reburied, but James's heart was broken. He had an expensive monument built on the site, a tall stone that bears the likeness of his wife standing high atop. At one time, a carving of her baby had been placed in her arms, but vandals have managed to break off the arm and the infant lies on the ground next to the marker. As the years passed, the strange story of Octavia Hatcher's moments began to be told and retold. Eventually, as in the case of many legends, the story was twisted and changed. The most common told retelling of the story was that Octavia had died while she was still pregnant. The story said that during the funeral, mourners heard an odd sound coming from inside the coffin, and when they opened it, they found the baby had been born dead. Obviously, this story is untrue. Jacob died several months before his mother. As the story continued to spread, the tall tale took on more of an urban legend. Most local historians do agree that she did fall ill and was buried alive. That's generally accepted. Of course, they didn't know she was alive when they buried her. Octavia Hatcher was only 20 years old when she gave birth to her only child, Jacob, in 1891. Jacob died almost immediately. Octavia sank into a long depression and then fell into a coma. She died, parentheses, 
on May the 2nd, 1891. This was during a spell of very hot weather, so she was buried very quickly. And then it was noticed that other people in Pipeful were also falling sick from these swooning spells. So these people were passing out and appearing to be dead, but within a short period of time afterwards, they were waking back up. So this got the people to thinking, is it possible that Octavia had also just passed out from this and maybe she hadn't really been dead when they buried her? So they went to the grave to dig her up and they found a horrible sight. Her fingernails were bloody and the lining of the coffin was shredded. Her face was contorted as she had screamed, cries to be let out of this coffin. She had indeed been buried alive. An absence of news accounts of this no noteworthy event is often cited by critics as proof that it really didn't happen. But Octavia Hatcher wasn't just anybody. She was the daughter of one of Pike County's most elite families. Her husband, James Hatcher, owned thousands of acres of Pike County land and made his fortune in coal and timber. Octavia Hatcher's gruesome fate made for juicy gossip, but actually reporting it could have been seen as bad business. They didn't want to get into the bad graces of this family who was very well known and the husband who was very well connected. Relatives of the Hatchers still disavow the story. They say it was just a bunch of foolishness. A year after Octavia's death, James Hatcher had a life-size marble statue of his wife set atop her hillside grave. An expensive gesture at that time. Later, he built a hotel in Pikeville called Pike Hotel, and he chose a spot where her marble gaze would always watch over him. He had a coffin built that was designed to um, remove the top in the event that someone was buried alive himself, in the event that he might be buried alive, so that um, once he died and he was placed in this coffin, he thought if he was really actually alive, he would be able to remove the top of this coffin and let himself free, something his wife was not able to do. He never remarried, and he outlived her by 50 years. He was buried at her feet. There is a story that when he died, a string was tied around his finger and ran above the ground and tied to a bell. He said that if he was buried alive, someone would be able to hear him ringing this bell. The stories didn't end with James Hatcher's death. Octavia's grave is said to be haunted, and in Appalachia, ghost stories are taken very seriously. Ghosts don't seem that special nowadays. People see them everywhere. But you'd be hard-pressed to find a grave of someone buried alive. And Octavia Hatcher is particularly tra traumatic. Its mournful, towering statue is mossy from age, and very little of this is documented. But the people in Pike County can remain convinced that Octavia's premature burial is not just a tale, but a true story. We were not there, but we know that most people accept that she was buried alive. Students from the local college and teenagers from around the area would often visit the cemetery on Halloween night and dare each other. They claimed that the statute would come to life and frighten trespassers as they came to the cemetery. It was during this period that someone broke off the arm of the statue that held the infant. Pranksters also went to the trouble of climbing onto the monument On these nights, the statue mounted on her grave marker would turn on its pedestal and face in the opposite direction. This story was told to be the truth for many years. 
This never seemed to quell the rumors that spread about the cemetery being haunted. People still visit the gravesite, and most especially those who lived on the hill where the graveyard is located, often told of hearing strange cries in the dark. They would also tell of seeing a misty apparition around the grave. Finally, in the middle 1990s, the Hatcher family placed a stone in the cemetery that contained information about her death, and they placed the statue on a new marble base with a fence around it to keep out vandals and trespassers. While the additions have managed to keep out the unwanted, they have done nothing to change the stories of ghosts and supernatural happenings around the cemetery. Many people expressed a fear around the cemetery and said at night it took on a new eeriness. They believed that they would see a ghostly vision of Octavia walking around. One couple who lived in the area for nearly 30 years told a story of something that happened very odd. According to their story, they heard the sound of a woman crying. They would walk toward the sound on several nights, and it would always lead them to the same area around Octavia's grave. Another couple who had moved to the neighborhood said that they were told by others in the community to expect to hear trespassers at night. One evening they walked into the graveyard because they heard what they thought was a kitten crying, but as they approached the sound stopped. So does the ghost of Octavia Hatcher walk in the Pikeville Cemetery, or are the stories just local myths? According to a witnesses, unexplained things still take place around the area where her life ended in terror. Witnesses say that they feel depressed and anxious when they get near the grave. Others tell of apparitions that they have seen walking around. They believe the ghost of Octavia cries not only for the loss of her baby, but for the terror that she went through. If you ever get the chance to visit the Pikeville Cemetery, we invite you to visit this site. Haunted or not, this place is where a tragic young woman died in a life was cut short. Now, Pikeville, Kentucky, Pike County, Kentucky, this is a very well-known story. They say that James Hatcher built, this, built the hotel in downtown Pikeville and built his offices, um, the windows facing the cemetery where he could look upon this statue and he believed the statue was also looking over him. This is from AppalachianHistory.net. She was only 20 years old when she died. Her body was reburied, but James was never the same. He built this life-size monument to his wife and had it placed over her grave. In one arm, she held the statue of her little baby, Jacob. Whether or not strange happenings actually have taken place in the cemetery or not, this young woman and her child are buried there. Her life was cut short, as was her baby's. This story was featured on Mysteries at the Museum, and the way that they told it was so terrifying. I wonder how Mr. Hatcher was able to go on. He never remarried. He never had any more children. But he continued to live there in Pikeville as a businessman and continued to build and um, do business around there until his own death. May they all be reunited in heaven in the happiness that they never got to know together on earth. And I think that that is a good way to end this video. I just wanted to talk a little bit about that. This is a local folklore legend. There wasn't a lot of reporting in the local newspapers about this because not only was Octavia married to James Hatcher, who was from one of the most 
wealthy, well-known, well-connected families. But her own family was also, you know, elite in the town at that time. It was more or less talked about amongst people, uh, between people. And that's how it kind of became this local legend. And for those of you who don't know the history of Pikeville, Kentucky, or Pikeville, uh, those of us who are from the area say Pikeville. <laughs> and um, this is also the area where the Hatfield-McCoy feud took place between Mingo County, West Virginia, and Pike County, Kentucky. Um, so if you've heard the story of the Hatfield-McCoys, you probably have. This is also the same area. So there's a lot of local legends in this area. I appreciate everyone for watching. And I hope everyone enjoyed.